Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we are having a quick blast through It's a Long Way to the Top if you want to rock and roll by ACDC. Despite the bagpipes, this is probably one of the greatest rock songs ever written and the rhythm guitar part is the most fun part to play in the entire song. If you're new to guitar, please do check out my no-nonsense guide to electric guitar and with that in mind, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Let's quickly talk about the sound before we get into the riff. So today we want something that's very overdriven but not too oversaturated that you can't make out the individual strings. We need to hit that sweet spot. I'm using the Blackstar Dep 10 Dual Drive today um, and I'm using it quite cranked up. But the trick with this one I found is to put the bass all the way down to about nine o'clock and then the middle and treble boost all the way to the max. On top of that, having something like a Les Paul with humbuckers in is really gonna help you. Now for the riff, we need to have the capo on the first fret. And there's gonna be two versions of this riff that we can choose to play or mix together. And the first one sounds like this. Now this is the version of the riff that I play the most often. And the chord that we're going to play throughout the entire thing is going to be an A power chord. And we're going to use the open A string, second of the G and second of the D. We are going to start by doing a downstroke and that's gonna be a string rake. So we're just going to mute the strings. We are then going to play the A power chord with an upstroke. After that, we're going to play that A power chord again with another upstroke. Afterwards, we are then going to play another two string rakes. This time we'll go down and up. Finally, we'll play that A power chord again with a downstroke. We can now cycle the riff. And a bit quicker. I said there was another version of this riff and it's very very similar there's just one key difference and that's at the start there's a quick hammer on and it sounds like this again we'll start with the string rake 
Then we'll do the upstroke, but instead of playing the A power chord, we'll start with the open strings. Again, we'll focus on the A string, D string, and G string. We'll then hammer on the A power chord. And from there, we'll continue on as normal. Now, the reason I bring up these two different versions of the riff is because on the record, right at the beginning, you can hear both of them being played. It sounds like this. So my advice to you to play this song live would be, Pick one or the other or mix them together if you're feeling confident. I personally play one or the other as I go along. If you have to pick one, personally, I prefer playing the one without the hammer on more so than I do the one with the hammer on. Now, the next thing we're going to have a look at is going to be the pre-chorus, and this is going to be a nice extension on the riff we've just played. And it just sounds like this. Now for this, we are going to start with the open strings, again, focusing on the A, D and G strings. And we'll play that with a downstroke. Then we'll play the A power chord with an upstroke. And from here, we'll stretch out our pinky finger all the way to the sixth fret of the B and E strings. And we'll just bar that. And we're gonna play that with an upstroke. So together we have this. Afterwards, we'll do two string rakes and that'll be down and up. Afterwards, we'll squeeze those strings back on, sixth fret, B and E strings, and we'll play that with a downstroke. From here, we'll go back to the start of that riff, but every time after the first time, we're going to play two sets of open strings, and I'll just show you what I mean. And when we do that, we'll play it with an upstroke, then downstroke. together it sounds like this. From here we'll move into the chorus where we are going to play a big A chord, moving into a G power chord, and then a D first inversion, and back to the A. It sounds like this. So like I said, we're gonna start with that A power chord. We're gonna let it ring out. Then we'll move into this G power chord. So third fret there, we've got the muted A string, open D, open G, and then third of the B and E. And then we'll move into a D chord with a first inversion on it. So that'll be the second of the E there. And then we've got the muted A, open D, second of the G, third of the B. You may want to spend a moment just working on that change. 
When I play it, you'll notice my ring finger stays firmly planted on the third fret of the B. Anyway, moving from that, we'll go into our A chord and we'll go into a little bit of the introduction riff. And again, you can choose to either play that with the hammer on or without. And then we'll repeat it again. A to G, D first inversion, back to A. Once again. Mixed in with the opening riff, there's also going to be a really cool bit of lead guitar, and it just sounds like this. And to play that, we are going to start by sliding in on our A string, 6 up to 8 fret, with our ring finger. We'll then play the 6th fret of our D string with our index. And then we'll be back down the neck around the 3rd fret, accounting for the capo there. We'll play the 3rd fret, and then we'll pull it off. And then play that A power chord. quicker if you've got the extra guitar player available this might be a really nice part to add in